The 2019 Doctrine and Devotion Conference on Biblical Theology draws nigh. You can find out more information and register at doctrineanddevotion.com slash conference. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that explores Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective with your winsome, intelligent, charismatic, and handsome hosts. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. I was actually sitting there thinking, like, did we get new hosts? Yeah, that really, I kind of oversold that. You really did. Yeah, you were be I'm only one of us is those things. <laughs> and I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How really? about you? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Huh. A little tired. You got yeah. some on your mind? No? Really? What? What? what am I? You look like there's a weight pressing down on your mind. Is there something? Is it because, although you have stated categorically that under no circumstances do you ever go to the airport to pick people up? I, why, why are we talking about this? I'm just no saying, one like, cares you've, about made, this. You've, say, no you've made one that statement. This. You've made that statement on the podcast. I don't, pay, I send a car. I send a limo. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't go. I don't, mm-hmm. I ain't got time for that. And now you have to go and pick up family members at the airport this weekend. <laughs> no, no, I had to do it last night. Oh, you already did it? <laughs> yes. I missed it. Yep, you missed it. Oh I, I, I even called you. I even told you. Oh, you did. I, I wasn't did. listening. I was. <laughs> wow. You called me. I was in the middle of a movie. Wow. You called. I was watching a movie. I'm like, I Bruh. just sat down to watch a movie. And now Jimmy's calling. Wow. I can't Dang. believe you did it. Yeah, I called you. I, you know, yeah, I remember now. While sitting I remember on now. the side of the highway waiting. Yeah, because you were too early. Too early. You yeah. don't ever go early. Well, their their flight was delayed an hour and a half. Yeah, you could you can know that before you know you take off. We're only forty five minutes away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah, you did that wrong. You don't know. We wouldn't know because you don't, normally I don't, don't do this. this. Yeah, my I wife made me do it. All right, so are you okay? Have you recovered? No, I, I think uh, it's a horrible experience. It is why, a bad, why do people do was, this? It was O'Hare at least, right? It was O'Hare. Yeah, yeah. You don't oh, want to go to Midway. Oh gosh, no man, let them rot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I ain't picking anybody up from Midway. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, uh, so yeah, my mother in law, sister in law, and uh, her kids. They're you got a full house. Yeah, man. Listen, Jimmy, I'm gonna need you. I need some extra time with you this weekend. Good, I know you got a lot going on at the house, but I think I you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to say, "I'm sorry, guys. I got to get out of here." Joey needs my help. Exactly, okay. Joey. Yeah, <laughs> Joey needs my help, guys. Yeah. Well, you know. No, but I'm glad they're all here. They're uh, yeah, good people. They're great people. Yeah, love them. Yep. Cool. So, cool, uh, cool, cool, cool. Listen, man. I know you and I both are kind of at the end of our tether. We are tired. Oh yeah, I'm tired. We're stressed. Uh, it's not bad. It's just like. There's a lot going on, and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about something here. We're gonna talk about assimilation, and then we're getting out. Oh yeah, because we're gonna, gonna go to bed go early. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to bed separately. I, our, each our, our own house. You know, sounded different when I said it. I mean, it sound yeah, weird. Yeah, I'm, we're gonna I, yeah. go to bed. I, I mean, mean I, well, there's a photo of us. Yeah, there is a photo floating. There is around. a photo floating yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah, don't search my Facebook, yo. Hey, uh, we're gonna talk about assimilation, and uh, you know who loves assimilation. Uh, Reformed Baptists. Yeah, they love assimilation. <laughs> They're all about Reformed people. Just love talking about assimilation. It's their mm. favorite, right? Well, if you can't tell, we're joking. They, they, yeah, I, people I've, get aggro about people it. People are like, we don't need to talk about oh, assimilation. This is just such a waste of time. This is business propaganda and worldliness. Yeah, Republicans. Yeah. So <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? I don't know what that meant. Yeah, yeah. All I know is, <laughs> man, I have seen people online talk about oh, build the wall. Yeah. That, no, I don't think that, that that's no. That's what they want. They don't. No. They don't want assimilation. They they want to build a wall. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you, you get that feeling, though. In some churches, the process of moving from first time visitor, newcomer to member is seems like so opaque that you don't really know where to go. You don't know what yeah. the plan is or what the path is. And no, you're yeah, like, things I guess, are not communicated. It, it, yeah. it almost feels like, am I really welcomed? Like, yeah, is right? there is there a path for me here or not? Listen, OK, so to all of our reformed friends, right? Listen, we're on the same team. Right. It's just that you're on the bench and, uh, you know, we're, we're starters. So um, so no, <laughs> to all of our reformed friends, uh, this is an important issue. Assimilation matters to you, whether yeah. you see value in it or not. Hopefully at the end of the conversation, you're going to go, you know what? OK, I get what assimilation is. And it's not a weird thing. Um, it is important. And Jimmy, th- listen, if we don't do this, yeah. we risk some pretty significant consequences to our churches and to our people. don't we? Absolutely. And one of the things that, that I that we risk is we have a lack of organization in our mission. And that that's something that's really key for me is that yeah. there has to be a purpose to what we're doing. There has to be intentionality. I know we, people don't like that because it feels like, oh, it doesn't have to be organic. No, no. Yeah, yeah weeds are organic. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's messed up. Yeah, and you, grow you're, everywhere. you're trying to rip them all out. Yeah. No, the, you need to be organized because if you're not organized, uh, then you're going to have in your pastor's study a calendar that is empty hey. that says seize the year okay. from 2017. Okay. So listen, <laughs> at this point, it's just staying up because it's awesome. I have a 2017 calendar on my wall I'd never used. <laughs> It's never had one thing on it. Never you had you one. never seized that year. No, no, man. That year seized up on me. That's what happened that year. No, so but what the, you're saying to me. Like, the, the, exactly. You have to have that intentionality. You have to have a plan and you have to be organized so that you could fulfill our call to make disciples. Right. So you think about it like, okay, we're, so we're, we're usually very clear. The mission, making disciples, proclaiming the gospel. Yeah, as uh, disciples. All right. So now. If you don't have a method for that, and assimilation is the method. If you don't have a method for that, it's not going to happen very well. Mm. And so I think you're right. not to say you're not going to see some fruit, right. but you're, you're missing out on fruit. I think so, too. Because not only, like you said, Jimmy, does it mean that you risk a lack of organization in the mission, in the execution of the mission. You also risk uh, basically producing a lack of direction for people who are coming into the church. People come to the church, man. They're like, oh, this is this is cool, man. I like this. I like these people. What do I do? How do I join? What's the process? What's yeah. the next thing that I'm supposed to do? If they don't know what they're going to do, they can uh, get frustrated. Yeah. And they may just be like, well, I guess they don't want me to join. Like you said, like, I don't really have, there's, you're not giving me a path to follow. So I guess I'm just going to peace out, especially if these are the kind of people that you want, you know, the kind of people who moved into the area, they're looking for a good church and they're like, I believe in membership. I want to join. If you don't have a clear path for them to follow, which is assimilation, by the way, then they're going to peace out and go find a place that does. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, I think uh, you're going to see a lack of growth uh, of the church itself. Right. Because like you said, Joe, people are just going to up and up and leave. Yeah. And and you know what? You're not going to have because you have no organization. You're not going to have a means by which to follow up with them. Right. So listen, assimilation does not mean your church is going to grow. But a lack of assimilation means it's going to be harder for your church to grow yeah. because it's going to be harder for people to know how to move forward and to, to join and become a part of of the church. So Jimmy, let's try and deal with this issue. Okay. Because people I know some people are gonna say, um, bros, I thought you were sixteen eighty nine. There's mm. no there's no chapter on assimilation. No. What are you talking about? So what are we talking about when we're talking about assimilation? Uh, when we're talking about assimilation, we're talking about one of the, uh, we would say the structural aspects of disciple making in the church. Right. So it's not, it, it can vary yeah. in terms of how it looks and, and how you do it because it's structural. It's um, it's sort of like the pathways or the steps, right? Mm -hmm. um, the way yeah, the that conveyor, the conve the escalator, yeah, the escalade, the elevator, the dumb waiter. Oh, Let's see, I, there's a lot of ways you can do it. The um, never waiter. The <laughs> that's what I am. <laughs> so um, I, I define assimilation this way. I, I would say it is the process by which newcomers to the church are guided in growing spiritually, building relationships, joining the church, and then using their spiritual gifts for the good of the body. Or to state it very simply, assimilation is the process of becoming a healthy part of a local church. See, I love that. I love that. The, the whole definition, but just especially when you, you simplified it there, right? Becoming a healthy part right. of a local church. This is what you want for your members. Right. This is what you want for individuals, for believers, is to become part of a healthy church. And I think, you know, it, once people, um, you know, start to think about this stuff, right? They go, okay, so yeah, we do need a, what is the path? What's the, what are the steps? How does, how does somebody become a member uh, of my church, right? And hopefully you don't just want people to become members. You want them to become a healthy part of the local body. Yep. Um, now, in a lot of Southern Baptist churches, you just walk forward and um, you sign a card and you are a member and yeah. that's it. Now, it, let, 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 let's look at that. I mean, that's why we have like bloated member roles. Who has a bloated member role? The SBC. The SBC. What? Yeah. Aren't they like 15 million? Yeah. We've got fifth biggest Protestant 15. denomination in the world. Pa Bam. Now, how many are on 15. Sundays? Well, that doesn't matter. Isn't it like four? It's like five million. Okay, five billion <laughs> on a given Sunday. But that's like what? The, that's like half or something. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a third. I know it's a third. It's not even. It's a third. Yeah, we got some bloated roles, everybody. Um, and a part of it is because we have janky assimilation, and sometimes we have janky views of conversion. And nope. there's a lot of problems. I also think that. we have a, a really janky view of membership. Oh yeah, we don't take yeah. the seriousness of church right. membership. Janky view of ordination. Yeah. Yep, janky view of uh, Lord's Supper. Janky view of assimilation. Yep. See, boom, that's what it is. So before you can 
before you just jump in and go, all right, let's put together a process. Like what, yeah. it, what are the very specific, you know, uh, princip- pra- practices that we're going to put into place uh, to make this thing work? You got to talk about the principles, right? And so Jimmy and I and, and all of us here at Redeemer, the, the assimilation principles that that we, we look at are very gospel based, right? And so mm-hmm. we, we talk about the assimilation principles of gospel encounter, gospel experience, yeah. gospel fellowship, gospel service, and gospel calling. Man, we are a gospel driven church. And this proves it. All you got to do is say gospel, 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 and <laughs> yep. there and you you're go. In. So, but we, we put it this way because, um, and I, th- I think you'll see these are um, experiential aspects of individuals' involvement yeah. and exposure in local churches. So, for example, uh, we'll talk about the gospel encounter, right? So that's the first stage of assimilation at the principal level, right? It's not necessarily the, uh, we're not talking about the first step, like the first, first practical step. We'll yeah, get yeah. to that stuff. But this is the, the, at the level of principle, this is the first stage, the gospel encounter. This means that at whatever point they enter into the church, whatever the front door of your church is, like in some churches, it's maybe community groups or missional communities, or maybe it's a, a mercy ministry for us. Um, you know, maybe it's more likely the worship gathering. So, at, but at every event, wherever mm-hmm. people might come into contact with your church, um, we want, uh, and we expect that our visitors and our newcomers are going to encounter the gospel. So this is a gospel encounter. Um, we have control over this. We can't control what they do with this, but we have control over the things that we say and the things that we present. And so we can ensure that the gospel is either explicitly or implicitly, hopefully both, communicated mm-hmm. through the preaching and teaching of the word or through works of, of mercy and our parenting and our fellowship and our dialogue with, with uh, other believers or even with the world. And so when unchurched people or non-Christians or even mature believers um, come into our church, they're going to encounter the gospel. Yeah. See, because it's not it's not dependent on a program. Uh, you can use programs. Oh, that's fine. Um, and it's not dependent on what kind of a person they are. It, it depends upon us, what is a priority to us, and what we're going to be pushing out uh, on the front end of our ministries. So um, the point here is that at every point of entry to the church – whether it's worship gatherings, mercy ministries, or whatever, the gospel is exalted and people are in some way confronted with the gospel. So gospel mm. encounter, that's the, on the principal level, that's one of the early things we want them to get when they show up. Yeah. And I mean, I think when we talk about the second stage of assimilation for us is experiencing the gospel. And Joe was talking about how in that first stage, you know, that's, that's, we're in control of that, right? The the gospel encounter, but for the gospel experience, this is out of our control, right? But it is the aim of yeah. of all of our ministry, right? And so we're we're we mean that like when we're talking about the gospel experience, we mean people are not only confronted with the gospel, but are in some way affected by it, right? right. There's the conviction of sin. Mm-hmm. There's the seeking of God. Eventually, faith and repentance. That's we want to see people who do not know Christ come to know Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are goals that we have set before us, right? To get these things, Jimmy, like you, you, we talk about gospel encounter and yeah. then gospel experience. They're two different things, but can't they overlap? Like. Yeah. Like it, it, as groups of people are yeah. coming into the church, like sometimes there's there's an overlap. It's uh, in the experience on for some individuals. Absolutely, because I think there some of these people have been are, are being prepared mm-hmm. uh, for for the this experience, right? That when they come. Uh, as they're hearing the gospel, they're encountering the gospel, that they're going to experience the gospel because the spirit of the Lord is, is at work. And maybe they're already believers, right? Yep. And so they come in. And so the gospel encounter for them is also a gospel experience for them. Correct. Right, right, right. So, you know, we're at this principal level, gospel encounter, gospel experience. We talk about gospel fellowship. And so really here, what we're talking about is for those who ultimately do believe the gospel, um, this next stage at the principal level of assimilation is, I mean, we just call it covenant membership, right? Where you pledge your faithfulness to Jesus and commit yourself to a local body of believers that we would follow them together. So, you know, the gospel fellowship, the communion of the saints is not just palling around with another believer, but it's actually covenanting together with the people who share and confess one savior, right? Who Mm -hmm. share one spirit, who preach one gospel. And then we've got uh, gospel service, right? And this is where we're people. It, it's not just about uh, the gospel is just for them, but it's for everyone, right? And so they begin participating and serving with the church mm-hmm. in her mission. And it's our goal and expectation that everyone at Redeemer will participate in and serve both the body and the community with the gospel. I like that. I like that because it's. I like that it is 
you, you, you encounter the gospel, you experience the gospel, and it is very much a me and Jesus experience, right? Yeah. He forgave me of my sins. But then once you really get your, your head and your heart wrapped around it, once you really understand what's going on, it immediately becomes outward, yeah. right? If you're doing this right, if you're following yeah, Christ. It shouldn't be inward focused from here on. It should be outward focused. Right, focus. right, right, right. Um, so gospel service, and then uh, we talk about gospel calling. And here we're talking about is believers are and members, right, are growing in, in, in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, the church is working to help those individuals identify their spiritual gifts, to help them mature as followers of Christ. Um, we want to help them uh, be able to reproduce themselves through discipleship mm -hmm. or to lead in whatever capacity God has equipped them and to determine what God has ultimately called them to do, whether that's in the church or in their life, their vocation, their family or whatever. And so when we work on the assimilation process at um, – at Redeemer, mm -hmm. these are the principles that are sort of governing what we talk yeah, about they're guiding us and in that, yeah. what we're implementing. And so, you know, before we talk about our process, um, we, we want to just talk about some some basic, I guess, things to consider, right? Okay. Uh, assimilation, uh, general practices that will help us, that, that helps. So we got the principles. These are the things, uh, these practices are, are the things that kind of help us to finally, and then we're going to do the process. Ooh, that was unintentional. Is that right? We got yeah. principles, practices. Pra yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, that was unintentional. You're a good Baptist. Yeah. So <laughs> the the pra and, and really the practices is the wrong word. Like, um, no, don't try to change it now. I'm gonna have to, try. but um, assimilation markers or something. But here, here's what we mean. Um, before you get to the laying out the process for your church. Uh, and therefore, for your newcomers, especially, um, you have to clarify what those next steps are mm -hmm. for your people, and you need to communicate those next steps, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when we talk about clarifying the next steps, we're saying, like, do you know them? Do do you as a leader, do you as an elder, right. do you as someone uh, in a position at, of your church, do you know uh, the the next step? Do you know? Uh, can you articulate it well? That was so like back in the day. Mm. Tyler Drewitz was here or yes. Drevitz. Drevitz, yeah. Drevitz. Yeah. So Tyler Drevitz, uh, from my XP. Yeah. We had him on the, on the good guy. Love him. Good pastor, friend of ours. So, uh, he and pastor Ryan, uh, they came over to help us think through our assimilation process. Mm. And that was the first thing they asked us. So what's your assimilation process? Like, and we're like, yeah, uh, you know, people come in and they do, mm -hmm. like, no, no. What's the next step? Do people know what the next step is? What are your steps? And uh, we really didn't have much clarity on that <laughs> at the time. And so they had to help us think through all this stuff. So I think it's a really good question. Do you know what those next steps are? Yeah. Like, how do those things work together to lead people forward yeah. to membership and fellowship and spiritual growth? And so once you kind of discuss those things and you, you know, whiteboarded it, then you want, you need to write everything down. Right? Yeah, yeah, do. And to, to, to figure it out, you got everything, everything. We're everything. talking website, uh, parking to membership classes, uh, spiritual gift discovery, every aspect of this. Yeah. You got to write it all down. Cause you want to figure out what, what are the steps and connecting points between these things, right? Correct. So after it's been clarified, then you need to communicate those next steps. Right. And so th this is really important because even if and when you know what the steps are, if you're not communicating them, you might as well be building the wall, right? You might as well mm -hmm. not be, uh, you might as well not even have the steps. So you got to communicate the next step. So how will you make the process known to your people, right? Are you going to do it during corporate worship? Are you, uh, are you going to find ways and opportunities to communicate next steps at different events or gatherings, uh, maybe in your community groups mm -hmm. or uh, through just interpersonal communications? If your people, if you know them and your people, your members know them, then they're going to be communicating these things as well. Yeah. You know, one of the things that all members should be communicating. The uh, next step for everyone. Exactly. Uh, needs to be coming to the Doctrine of Ocean Conference on Biblical Theology, May 3rd oh. and 4th. Dude, our transitions are amazing. They're tight. They're, 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 they're amazing. Tight. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. So anyways, May 3rd and 4th, we got the Biblical Theology uh, Conference. We've got Dr. James uh, Hamilton. We've got Doug Logan. We got Joe Thorne, Jimmy Fowler. We've got Nick Batsy. We got Jen Thorne. We got... Phil and Jasmine Holmes, we've got Steve McCoy. Woo! Man, yeah. we got lots of swag. We got more spot. In fact, you know what? Another sponsor saw what we were doing. Mm. And they were like, we want to get in on that. Yeah, exactly. And so you know who that is? Oh, who's that? Legionnaires. Oh, the, the Legionnaires? Legionnaires Ministry, though. But Legionnaires is my jam! <laughs> <laughs> Legionnaires, I'll tell you what. I'll, here's, here's something that's in the swag bag. 
Calvin's booklet on the Christian life. Oh, thank you, Legionnaire. Boom. Everybody gets one. Everybody. 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 Every but other gotta, body. But you got to be at the conference to get it. Correct. Where do they go if they want to register? I, you, they want to. Where do they go to register? Yeah, it's it. You want to go to doctrineanddevotion.com slash conference. Are you sure? You looked confused. I did. Okay. I, for some reason in my head, I'm like, doc and devo. Don't do that. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Doc, Doctrineanddevotion.com slash conference. Cool. All right. So, cool, Jimmy, cool, 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 cool. listen, we are not experts in assimilation. No. We no. are experts in canasta. Yeah. We are oh, not experts. Yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. We are not experts in assimilation, but we are working on it. We do work on it. We've been working on it for yeah. almost uh, 12 years now here at Redeemer uh, from a place where we had no sense of what we were doing to now we have a pretty good sense of what we're doing, but we constantly need to work on it and to improve. Yeah. So we are, we want to talk with you guys, we'll share with you what our basic assimilation process is. Not everything that is necessary that goes into this. We're not going to talk about, um, you know, the parking lot, visitor centers, welcome tables, or like uh, newcomers kiosks, like with the iPads <laughs> and stuff. Uh, we're not going to get into worship guides and bulletins uh, or coffee bars. Mm -mm. We're not, listen. But all, all, all that's relevant though, right? All that's important. important. Every it, single thing yeah. matters. Every, but we're listen, not going to be talking about those here's, things. Here's though. the thing. If, if something that you're doing on Sunday morning is distracting from the purpose of worshiping Christ, lose it. If it's not going to help people move forward yeah. in discipleship, lose it. So what we're going to talk about are just the basics of our assimilation process. And um, I'll do the first one. All right. The entry point. The oh. entry point. Uh, so this is where do most of the people first come into contact with what the church is all about? Now, for some churches, it may vary. But for us, it does not vary. It is a like, vast majority of people. The entry point is Sunday morning at Redeemer. Yeah. Because it's a Catholic area. So yep. people are kind of familiar with church. Even if they don't go to church, they know yeah, people go to church on Sunday. And so if they're going to investigate, if they're going to look, if they get invited to something, uh, they, it's generally to a worship service. And even if they are invited to a small group, most of them aren't down with sharing feelings mm -hmm. and like with a bunch of strange religious folk that they don't know. So the front door of the church for us is um, is our corporate worship. And so you got to clarify that you have to know, okay, what is the entry point or what are the entry points for our church? Yeah. Ours primarily Sunday morning. Uh, the next step for us is uh, during announcements mm -hmm. uh, where the person will encourage uh, newcomers or visitors to fill out a connection card. There's a connection card in the seat back in front of them. Yeah. Uh, and so they what's grab that, it. What's that got on there? Uh, well, we ask like their their name, you know, their marital address, status, marital status, kids, uh, email. Uh, phone number, and then if they want to be part of the church email list, the opt-in option, opt-in option. If they want a prayer request, or if they want to uh, talk with a pastor. But one of the things that Pastor Pat does mm -hmm. every week yep. is uh, he always follows up with every visitor to you know he sends them a message or or a phone call. Yeah, text, phone call, something like that. You no, know, mainly an email or phone call. He doesn't yeah, text. Yeah, phone text. He does not text. I think he, he texts. Text. He, he likes the text. So we got the the connection card. Facebook. Uh from there. Oh yeah, and if they want to join our Facebook. Yeah. Uh so connection card, uh newcomers lunch. We make that announcement. We, we don't make, make a ton of announcements, but Sometimes but, we get carried away. Yeah, but some of these are are the important ones, yeah. right? The newcomers lunch when it is, we let people know, hey, the new the next newcomers lunch is on such and such date. You could sign up in the foyer and make sure foyer. you do that foyer, foyer. so that way foyer, uh, you foyer. can uh, go to the foyer and then sign up uh, for the next one. There you're gonna meet a, you know. Well, we'll talk about the yeah, we'll talk about that later. Moment. Yeah. And then the orientation, right? We'll, yep. we'll, sometimes we'll announce that. We'll announce that saying, hey, here's that next step of the process. So if you're looking, uh, if you just want, you want more information, just more information about uh, uh, who we are, what our vision is, what it is that we believe the mission of the church mm -hmm. is, be a part of this. So here's the thing. Those announcements that are made on Sunday morning, um, the people who are hearing them know, oh, you know what? I need to fill out a connection card. I've never done that. Yep. And they'll hear about the newcomer's lunch. Like, oh, I haven't been to that. I want to go. Um, and so like the newcomer's lunch, right? And we have those spread throughout the year. So uh, we basically cater in some food. Yep. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great, lot of great local places. And so we have uh, a select number of families that tends to rotate. So different family members from the church uh, or different member families. Yeah, different member families of the church. Uh, sign up, and a lot of them are community group leaders, uh, but not mm -hmm. just them. And so we'll have essentially a couple or an individual for every newcomer who's there. 
And so we all sit at a table, we share a meal, we have some fun. We're not going to yeah. go into all the details. And what's actually really important there is that the leaders all sit at different tables. Oh, yes. It, so it's, it's, a, it's a leader or a member serving in this capacity yep. as a leader for this meal. Uh, they join a particular family or individual who is at the newcomer's lunch as a newcomer. Yep. And um, so this is when uh, we have some fun. We, do, we, have some, we have some pretty cool things that we do. Um, they learn about our community groups. A lot of our community groups, people are there. And then um, after the whole thing is over, uh, I will give a big picture vision of what Redeemer Fellowship is all about. And really the, 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 the thing that we tell them there is, as newcomers, hey, listen, we want to encourage you, check out some of our community groups. Like that's kind of yeah. the lead in to the next step in our assimilation process. So you got the entry point, the announcements, the newcomers lunch, and then we try to get people to plug into a CG. Yeah. So uh, we're constantly bombarding people about joining a, a CG. Not, but not like you better get in or you're not going to, or you're out. Like, you get like in or it's a sin. Oh, hey, I'll write that down. <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's good. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's in our bulletin. We announce it. We point it out. We say, listen, there's uh, many options based on geography and time and date. Uh, so just reach out to that CG leader and get plugged in. Uh, this is one of the best ways of uh, connecting with the church right. family. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we just love our community groups. And so our, our leaders are naturally, if they meet somebody, they don't know, hey, are you going to a community group yet? Yeah, yeah. Come, come check to out mine. mine. Yeah, well, everyone wants to be in ours. Really? Uh, then how come we have like 50 people in ours? Because ours is the most popular. Anyway. No, because we have three leaders that don't yeah. know how to uh, do. multiply. No, about? you don't. Yeah, you, you, guys, do. you guys go I know how to do it. it. No, you don't. You just I do. won't do I've it, started and thing. I've started and led more CGs than you will probably ever do in your life. So I know what I'm doing. We yeah, because about. you know what you do is you you start mm-hmm. a CG yeah. and then you stop going to the CG. Because I got to start another one. See, yeah, right. Yeah, it's like the mm-hmm. DG we had together. It's a DG. Nobody knows what you're talking about. All right. <laughs> so then after community group, right, that's a good step. And maybe they don't get into a community. Like these things can sometimes happen – out of in, order. In, in, yeah, in any order. You might miss the newcomer's lunch and go straight to a community group, right? It doesn't yeah. really, not all these things have to fall in order. But orientation, that is essentially our new, our, our members class. We call it orientation because it's not just a members class. This is to orient you to what we are all about at Redeemer. Mm-hmm. It's a four-hour class. We cover the heart, character, and life of the church. I wrote a couple of little books on that. Yeah, you can head on um, jofostore.com right now and grab them. Get those books. Um, but here we talk about the gospel. So if we have people there that don't know Jesus, we're preaching the gospel at them. We talk about theology, like Baptist theology. Reformed theology, Reformed Baptist theology. Uh, we talk about church life and the expectations that we have of our members. What is expected? What's not expected? And then we do a lot of Q and A. And so that's a four hour class. We provide child care if it's needed for people um, as we're walking them through that. But the orientation is is a, is fun. People that come to orientation, by and large, they love that thing. That's a really good. Time. Oh yeah, yeah, really good. Probably because and, and there's know. and there's no uh, like commitment, right? No, you're, you're just, just go to the info. They, yeah, that's just. Just so you can get a better understanding. So after someone's gone through orientation, though. And they get this packet, right? They get a packet that yep. has our statement of faith in it. It's got our church covenant in it. Uh, it's got all they get our, they have access to our constitution. They get yep. all the information. Then there's the membership class or they become become members. Right. And so they sign up for membership. There's a questionnaire that they get that they fill out and they meet with an elder most of the time, oftentimes. All, All of the, the time. time, it's uh, Pastor Pat. So, so Pastor this is Pat a, will do an interview with them. And the re- here's really the way why this works out so well. I basically teach every orientation class. Yes, we do this because I'm passionate about it. It's one of the few things I'm actually kind of good at. And, and um, you don't have to sit down one on one with people <laughs> because <laughs> no, no, no. I like I like sitting down one on one. I like sitting down one on one. What are you talking about? Don't laugh at me. I'm sitting down one on one with you but right now. Is, I know, but why is it that you always ask us? Why can we not build a tunnel so that you could just go st- from your office straight to the stage okay. and back without having to talk to? Anybody? And that's not because I don't like people. That's because I don't like myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that was one. Hi. Now, listen. <laughs> this, um, this this works out really well because I get to meet all of these people coming into the church. And so, and as the church grows, I don't get to have a lot of interaction with everybody. Yeah. So I get to talk to everybody, get to answer questions, and then Pat. Uh, when they fill out the questionnaire, it's like, oh, they want to join. Okay, so the next step, fill out the questionnaire in order to, uh, and then we look at that. It's like thirty questions, right? Yeah. And uh, and it's it, it's everything. Like, what's the gospel? How would you handle conflict with the member? Were you a member of the church before this? Did you have any trouble with that church? Were you, you know, leaving good standing? Yep. Yeah. Have you been baptized? W twos, credit card number, no, whatever. Stop it. All kinds of stuff. <laughs> so they fill out that, and then the, after the questionnaire is filled out, it's sent to the church. It gets uh, uploaded and then shared among the elders, but it's Pastor Pat who does all the interviews. So yep. now a, one full-time pastor uh, or one of the two full-time pastors, that's me, does the class. Then the other full-time pastor does the interviews. We both have access to all these people. It works out really well. And then uh, after the interview um – 
Pat will then make a recommendation to the elders saying, I am recommending these individuals uh, to move forward with membership and the elders vote They've on it. They've been baptized, they're believers or yep. whatever. Yep. Yeah. And so then, and then uh, the elders will bring them forward uh, at the next quarterly meeting, members meeting to be voted on. By the church yep. because we Baptist. That's yeah. So pretty it. much uh, it's been unanimous. Yes. For everyone. Except, uh, except Steve McCoy. Steve McCoy got a, got a no. Yeah. Steve McCoy on got record. A, a has, verbal no. Verbal no. No. For someone. <laughs> they said nay, but yeah. Did they say nay? He said nay. Travell said nay? He said nay. The first time in his life he said nay. Yeah. He, uh, Always because he's, he's at a white church now. Because we I say think nay. So. He was like. Yay and nay. He, he said, yeah, yeah. What? Gonna whip. Watch me nay. Nay. Is that how? Is that's, that, that's is that the origin doing. of that? That's, that's a Baptist origin. song? It's a Baptist oh song. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna watch me whip. Yeah. <laughs> watch me nay. <laughs> So then once, you know, so you can see how the assimilation process is working, right? Yeah. They walk into the church at the entry point. They hear the announcements up front. Uh, they they fill out a connection card. Maybe they go to the newcomer's lunch. They meet some people, find out, like, these people are great. I love these people. I'm going to plug into a CJ. Mm-hmm. They do that. And then they hear, oh, listen, there's an orientation class coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go to that. And then they fill out the questionnaire because they want to join. And then they get an interview with an elder. And part of that, right, is part of that is, is where do you see yourself serving in the church? Yeah. We have a ton of opportunities. Uh, some some that are uh, carry with More them up front, a, a yep. significant burden. Some that are lighter, right? And so different people have different capacities and time that they can commit. Some are very public and upfront. Some are behind the scenes. So where do you see yourself serving? Your musician, and if you are, are you any good? Because if you're a musician but you're not any good, yeah, then yeah, ain't gonna yeah, happen. Yeah. Um, so uh, th- we help them figure out where they're gonna serve. Service is not just an important part of assimilation. Service is an important part of the Christian life. So we want to, we, that's a, that's a, one of the steps. We want to help people figure out where can I begin to serve? So we get them to plug in and uh, help them find a spot. And, uh, and if it's good, great. And if not, then we find another spot for them, whatever. But that is a part of the process so that they can ultimately grow yeah. and become sure. Like our goal is not to grow the church. Our goal is not to see converts. Our goal is to make disciples, meaning that we want to see people become mature. Right. This is what Paul talks about in Colossians. Um, Paul says that uh, basically he says we preach Christ and we teach every man and we admonish every man with all wisdom that we might present every man complete in Christ. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal is mature disciples of people that know Jesus, love Jesus and look like Jesus. And this is what we labor for, Paul says. So that's I mean, that's what assimilation is ultimately about. It's 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 not a weird worldly church growthy mega church slick thing. Yeah. Nine hundred thousand a year salary type. Oh my type gosh, did you thing. see that? Did you <laughs> yeah. see that? I saw it. Okay, well if people don't know what we're talking about, don't worry about it. Yeah. But yeah, that was crazy. Okay, listen. Oh now we gotta say okay, this guy that we've been talking about a little bit. He was fired from his church. He was making like nine hundred thousand dollars a year or something, according to the article that we just read. Anyway so it is it is not about all that stuff. Assimilation is simply the method that you put into place. It is the structural aspect of your disciple making practices. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And so assimilation should matter to you. If you want your if you want people to join your church and become a healthy member, then you're going to have to have an assimilation process. Yeah, and if you're lacking one or needing some direction, uh reach out to Tyler over at My XP. He ain't sponsoring. He ain't sponsoring no, this I show. Know, but this is well, this you section. don't share it if you're not sponsoring. No, but, but it's a, don't give the website. No, no, Do yeah, not myxp.com. Don't. Is it .com though? I don't know if it is. is it? Let me look it up real <laughs> quick. Because again, he's not sponsoring, but he's my. This is a this, is, this fits really well. It's a great I feel resource. Like that's not it. No, it's wait. Did you wait? I spelled it. Oh, it's myxp.church. Oh, there you go. I there thought so. I was like myxp.church. Listen. Yeah, check it out. To, get get together uh, with them. That's good. It, it's worth it. They will help you out for sure. Do that. Tell them. Uh, tell them. Joe Fo sent you. There you and go. Uh, and you'll get extra special treatment. Yeah, I think he'll be. No, that's yeah, not true. Totally. He's always very nice to everybody. But more so when we. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You could follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo yeah. or on Facebook slash Doctor Devotion. Mm-hmm. You can head to the website DoctorDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store JoeFoStore.com mm-hmm. and grab some. Gear. Hey, you know what they need to do? What's that? They, they need to go over to iTunes and leave us a, a, a review. Well, if they're going to leave a review, it needs to be an honest five-star review. Yeah, we listen, we don't want dishonest. And then you go and share it uh, with your friends because sharing is caring, y'all. Listen, here, here's the thing. Are we still on the iTunes? We're on, we're on the iTunes. Hold on, okay, continue. 
All right, doctrine devotion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it up because it says I'm not subscribed, but now I can't. Oh, you you don't even subscribe to us? How do you get to it? Add to play. To, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know how, how this how, all works. How do you get to the? How do you get to the doctor? I don't know how. So, to anyways, leave us the honest five star oh, review. Fresh pod every store? Monday and store? Thursday. It's not set up. Blog posts on Wednesdays. Video I content on Fridays. Five star review. Wait later. Oh, okay, all right, bye.